Welcome everyone. Good morning, good evening, good afternoon. Welcome to Facebook Live. It is the 23rd of August, year 2023. I hope everyone is having a fantastic um, end to August. We are almost in September, almost close to fall. Let me get started on our panel today. Hopefully the others join because I have not seen them send any messages. So we have Patricia here, who is part of our co-group of meditators. Good evening, P Patricia. Then we have Hannah as well. Hannah is Rob's uh, daughter. Good evening, Hannah. And let me put the question back again so that Hannah can read it. Um, so Patricia, if you want to get started, this person says, when encountering conflict with a family member, who continually projects and doing everything to remove myself from the situation to then be confronted and as a result triggered. I'm really struggling with my decision to cut contact with this person. Intuitively, I feel it is the right thing to do for a number of reasons, but the amount of guilt and pain I feel is like heartbreak, grief maybe. I keep reassuring myself it's necessary for non-attachment that as soon as the emotions move through me, I'll be back to my usual bubbly content self. As you can read, I'm in my thoughts a lot with this. Any suggestions or insights, shared experience, it's very much welcome. Thanks. So you want to get started, Patricia, and I'll tag everyone. Thank you. Thank you so much. That's a very universal person uh, question. I think we all <laughs> can relate to that one. But I recently, actually it was yesterday, I heard um, Sage Robbins talk about very similar um, question from one of the attendee to the summit. And I really loved her question, uh, her answer. And I think I would like to share it because she said that um, she looks at triggers as invitations, invitations to look into something within ourselves that's being triggered. So wh whoever that person, the family member is, who is triggering us, it's really a greatest lesson and the greatest teacher. So, and, and she was talking about loving what is. So, in that moment, this is what life you know, brings. It brings the trigger. And the trigger is the invitation to look into ourselves because we, we would um, react to that trigger as a normal, from normal conditioning that we have. But now, because we see it, we have that consciousness or awareness of the trigger and how painful it is. So now it gives us that minute of awareness that we can choose to respond with love, with understanding, with compassion, not only to that person, but to ourselves. So, uh, I wouldn't really think it's like, oh, I have to be the bubbly self. No, we are everything. We're not just bubbly selves. We also have sadness. We have those other emotions. And this is a part of human experience. So just wanting one state, not others, and thinking that other states that we experience are bad. No, they're not bad because this is what it is. I mean... Right, like Eckhart says, you can't argue with what is, because just from that perspective, the suffering comes. So I would just meditate on it maybe and look into it what really is causing inside of me that trigger, what old pattern, what belief is causing that and believe about love, believe about family, believe about relationships, believe of, you know, self-worth, 
this is such a great opportunity for growth that triggers. So I'll be actually very grateful in that moment. It happens to me today even. I got triggered at work. And instead of my usual defensive self, my ego, I just like, hmm, let me look into it. And just quickly, invert. it doesn't make me feel good. But what? What is not feeling good? My oneness, my, my consciousness, right? My wholeness, it's not being affected. What's being affected is something with ego, something that it identifies itself. But everybody has to like me. Everybody has to validate me because I'm so smart. If someone ignores me or it's in their state of mind, I'm like, okay, I'm giving them the space. It has nothing to do, but oh, thank you. Thank you for showing me because now I'm feeling it's like, oh, I'm still thinking that I'm not good enough that if I had something good to say, everybody has to acknowledge that and validate me and say, oh, great. Just what, what a wonderful person you are, or, you know, how smart you are, no. And that was such a powerful lesson that I was able to observe it. And, um, you know, we talked about it before about triggers, but I think that's just first thing, gratitude. Thank you. Thank you. You don't have to say it out loud to the person because that might <laughs> sound a little fake as the person might actually get angry. What do you mean? You're thinking, uh, but just in your heart. It's like in your heart and just, you know, start breathing in that moment and really see what's coming up and offer that space to the person to, to be whatever they're being in that moment but also to ourselves, to the trigger. And I think Thich Nhat Hanh was the one that said um, that when that comes out, that seed of the negative emotions, just be like a mother to a child, just hold it, hold it with love. And sometimes that's all it, it's enough. You know, that's 16 seconds when we, uh, stand within the emotions and the emotion just disappears because if we don't feed it if we don't add any ego to it we just go away and move on to the next thing so that would be my advice and experience to share thank you beautiful it's uh, incredible, Patricia, synchronicity. I actually watched that same or listened to the same. Uh, they had like some kind of women's uh, summit, unstoppable summit, right? Teresa Kuchis and Yeah, I was like, only the able women. to actually hear just Sage. I, I couldn't see before and after. I had to really just that, let her, her segment. I was... <laughs> <laughs> which was perfect because I listened to the same thing today so uh, here when she said uh, she or he says when encountering conflict with a family member who continually projects that statement itself we have made a judgment right the moment we make a judgment we created polarity you, you want to say something? Good evening. Good to see you. Hey, how you doing? I, I just seen Francesca go on, so I just waved at her a little side wave. <laughs> okay, great. Thank you. Thank you. So uh, the moment we project today, um, I was also listening to some of the channels that channel uh, St. Germain and um, one of the, uh, I mean, when they channel St. Germain, he always says that the, um, the moment we judge, right? Like, even if we judge that, uh, why is this war happening? We are creating the war. Why is this uh, shooting happening? We are creating the shooting because we are saying no to something, right? So it almost is like, uh, just like Michael Singer says, be surrendered to it. Like first the judgment, 
the judgment is I feel what is causing the person to come and say, um, even though they're removing themselves from the situation, then the person comes and confronts them because the person sees the energy of judgment, right? That's what is triggering them. We are being triggered, but we are actually triggering them and that's what triggers us. So that's the chain reaction cause and effect, right? So that's what I feel is going on. I know April joined. Uh, April, I posted the question again. It's, it's, I won't read it again. Um, you you want to say something about it? Thank you so much. Grateful, Patricia, for your input. Let's see what April has to say. I think you're on mute, April. My uh, button disappeared for a second. <laughs> Thank you. So this is um, something that you know we have talked about. It comes up every now and then because we deal with families and we live in families and some people are difficult. <laughs> we'll, we'll say difficult, right? <clears throat> there are some people that do project um, when you are not on this path, when you're not on the self-healing journey, when um, you're not aware of your own emotions, your own shadow, then you will project. One thing about projection is it's like a defense mechanism. So you're already feeling bad and you have all these emotions inside you don't really know how to deal with. And you, most of the time you have like low self-esteem, low self-image. So projecting is almost like a defense mechanism. It's not me, it's you. And then we have the energetic part that was brought up that, um, you know, sometimes people who are not well, when they're around people who are well or who are trying to be well, that is a trigger that triggers their energy because um, it's kind of like the misery loves company concept, you know? So there's many ways we can go with this, but um, one of the main things that I would do is, you know, outside of removing yourself from the situation is doing the self-talk and remembering that there's something going on inside of this person that doesn't necessarily have anything to do with me. These are this person's emotions. And there's part of us on this journey where we have to become emotionally responsible. We have to become responsible for our own emotions. We have to know our emotions and we have to become responsible for them. And instead of pushing them out onto others, we actually have to deal with them. Um, but you have to know that this other person's not in that space yet. They're not there. They're not capable of doing that. So that would be the second thing I would do is, you know, removing myself, I would keep my center as much as possible, taking myself back to the center, back to alignment, and having that conversation with myself that this person's going through things. This isn't necessarily me. This is their emotions. And then, of course, if we have done something, we do, you know, we own up to that part. <clears throat> the other part of this is the breaking off of the relationship. And this is something that we've brought up too. Sometimes it's okay to set that boundary. Some people are not well, and they may not be well in this lifetime. And you can either cut the relationship off completely if you feel like that is what's needed, or you can set boundaries around the relationship where you don't see them as much or communicate with them as much. So this is really about owning your own energy, being responsible for your own emotions, and then understanding that that person is in that, that's where they're at. They have all this stuff going on inside, so they project it out. Um, now, when you break up with people or you have death or you have divorce or separation, 
the five stages of death come up. So divorce is similar to death. And sometimes I think divorce is worse than death because the person is still alive and um, it includes other, you know, family members and all that. So as they're talking about going through, um, what is it, what is it they say? Uh, as soon as the emotions move through me, I'll be back to my usual bubbly self. Well, that is true, but you have to watch the stages of grief. And then also you have to, you have to process through whatever the loss is or whatever the loss means. And then you'll be back to your bubbly self. If we don't process through it, then those kinds of things tend to haunt us. So <clears throat> that would be my first step for um, advice for this person is not taking what this person's doing personally in any way, shape or form. You have to remember people act how they feel. And you, I love Eckhart's examples. I just love his examples in this. I absolutely loved his example of the person sitting at the end of their driveway. And do you think that so-and-so is waiting for you to come to pull out in front of you? Are they waiting for you? But we feel like they did wait for us and how dare they pull out in front of us. And, you know, if you're feeling nice, like I've said before, you're at the gas station and you want, you're just feeling nice and generous and you're going to hold the door open. You don't stand there and say, well, you know what? I think you're a little short. I'll wait. No, you feel nice. You open the door. The people act how they feel. That's the biggest thing. So, uh, so you, you heard my response to Patricia, right, uh, April, that just saying that continually projects that this person projects, um, that in itself is what is the cause. The effect is we are getting triggered. But the cause of it is the vibrational energy is within me. Does that make sense? That other person, like you're saying that the other person is um, unwell or uh, unconscious. Eckhart uses the term unconscious, right? They may be unconscious, but in this moment, the soul, uh, soul group or the soul contract with this person, this person is meant to be unconscious for me so that I can learn the lesson of why is he or she triggering me. Right. Yeah. It's a it's a this moment when I'm getting triggered by this person, they're getting I'm getting triggered because I need to learn this lesson. That I shouldn't be triggered, that nothing should trigger me. I, I am I am I have a loss of presence within me. I am not in my presence. I'm in my ego. Something in my ego is getting hurt. And so that is what is responsing with I am triggered the response my mind the self-talk in my head is i'm getting triggered right however and this is the thing right this is our lesson of unconditional love this is our lesson of uh, no matter what what is going on whatever is being said that we unconditionally love the other person so that we don't we don't start that polarity of uh cause and effect that they are they're, they're, they get triggered by our judgment and then we get triggered by whatever they they start confronting us right the vibrational energy was always within me that created the situation my my job is to be surrendered okay this person did their whatever their unconscious is unconsciousness is my job is to be surrendered to it the moment I surrender and I accept it, yeah, this is the person, this is the way they are, and that's okay. They can only work at their level of consciousness. It is okay for them to be the way they, they are. And then, uh, go ahead. I mean, that is true, that if there's something that you need to work on, then the universe will bring that to you in some way, shape, or form. That is true. Um,
Now, there are times where I've, you know, I've had things happen that I certainly have worked on. Um, and I don't know if it's just like a refresher course <laughs> um, or, you know, uh, or it's just like, you know, the schooling, the school of, you know, doesn't, doesn't really end. Um, so, I mean, I can see what you're saying and yeah, it would be a judgment and then the way out of it would be to keep yourself centered and to mm -hmm. not, it's really to not take it personally. Mm -hmm. You really have to not take the things personally that those people are doing. And it's hard depending on who it is or if it's somebody that's really close to you. It's hard to do that. It's hard to not think, you know, why are they doing this to me? So I think that would probably be the first thing that I would correct. The first belief, they're doing it to me. Mm -hmm. That would be the first belief that I would correct. They're not doing it to you. They're doing it. And we can take you out of the picture and they'll do it to somebody else. I think you had a question. Thank you, April. Did you have a question, Ewan? Well, I, I basically been through all, through all that about a year and a half ago. I would always, if you remember when I first come into the group, maybe you did, but I was like, all right, if I jump into this, situation with a, with an unconscious parent and i mean i would get mindful before i would go in i'd look at the beautiful tree that was, was changing colors and i'm thinking okay i'm set i got good energy i'm going in i'm vibrating high i only to go in and my energy would just deplete it would be like it would just suck the end. The whole atmosphere would just suck the energy out of me, whatever. Then it would start. And then I'd say, that's it. I'm out of here. I'm removing myself from the situation. So I'm reacting. I'm leaving. I'm all pissed off. Right. So today, like April said, I've learned to set boundaries. And you're just not, you're just going to say, I'm not going to take it no more i'm not going to react to it and when i say react to it <clears throat> you'll get it takes a lot of work it's a lot of, i mean you'll fall on your face at least i did probably i don't know maybe 200 times and finally when something is said and it, it's so um because you have that unconditional love kind to it like that mental umbilical cord you we've talked about before um, that's a sacred channel between two family members that they violate. They think nothing of it, you know, and that's when it hurts even more. Anything to get at you, they're gonna they're gonna try to get that that reaction out of you. Well, I got so good at it that it's it's instantaneous. I don't react. So the only time I, you know, it's like remove myself from the situation. Well, if you're gonna behave like this. You just tell the person the way it is that they don't like and you and you walk out and and you don't react when you leave you leave like okay well i guess i'm gonna go get something to eat now or, you, you know it's just like i used to leave all upset you know but um yeah it's it's a lot of work and i'll be honest with you you all know what i'm going through with the with the cancer stuff i look back the last year and it's one been one big lesson because all that frustration all that um anger all that anxiety um not really depression but just anxiety and just being pissed is making this a breeze what i'm going through now <laughs> i'm telling you i mean i'm like you want to talk about april said the universe giving back well i'm going to tell you right now this is so unbelievable. I started meditating. Francesca helped me, but I started doing what she said. My, um, I, by the way, Francesca, I looked back on my journal, like you said, crazy man. Just the dumbass thoughts I was thinking. Anyways, long story short, I started meditating. I, I didn't realize it was back in January until actually today when I looked at it. But, um, 
by doing all that, you do vibrate at a higher frequency and people see you different or I see them different. And I'm telling you, I mean, every person, the universe is it's coming out of the woodwork. I got my neighbors bringing me dinner every night. Um, the pharmacy guy's going out of his way. This one, the, the, the nurses are doing things they shouldn't be doing. <laughs> you know, I mean, it's just, it's crazy. I would have never imagined this in a million years. But, um, but yeah, that, that big negative thing that I dealt with for so long is really, it's like, it's like boot camp training for, for what I'm going through now. Plus, then I get the icing on the cake with the universe. So Perfect. I don't know if that all makes sense to you guys, but that's, what's, that's what I experienced in relation to what I'm reading here. You so know? you're just proving, proving the point you, now that your presence has increased, right? The depth of your presence has increased. You are seeing the effect of the, you are exactly proving the point that I was making, that you're seeing how the universe is responding out in the external world. It's an inner reflection of your vibrational energy. The more at peace you are, the external world is also going to be at peace. So you're just proving that exact point and synchronicities arise, helpful oh circumstances, helpful circumstances arise. That's and unbelievable. Exactly. So you're just proving the point. And this person is going to miss that mark by not surrendering, by reacting to the family member. They're going to miss the mark on universe responding to this situation because they're going to learn other situations where they could have the same kind of trigger and not be reactive and seeing how the universe responds the and abundance it, with which the universe responds back. And another thing, if they cut them off and then that person passes, they're gonna they might be stuck regretting that for the rest of their life. At least they should just try to just stomach as much as they can and right. use it like a like a tool like I did, just to react less and less and less, you know, until you really, really it's it's really a great time to work on you because we're really seeing ourselves and then in the other yeah and it's hard and a lot of people have a hard time seeing that I, I my ego was so high I'm like the hell are you guys talking about she's the one acting like the ass not me well I'm you know I, I just wouldn't you know so it's just it just it's, it has taken me a long while to get where I'm at you know I say long while it's like a year and a half really 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 putting the work in mm -hmm. and only you can do it as we know Mm -hmm. right so you just can't sit there and dabble in it for a few years and think the miracles are going to happen you know but if so thank you so much and um uh, this person also says i keep reassuring myself it's necessary for non-attachment that uh you um cut the other person off and they're calling it non-attachment. That's the ego just justifying themselves, right? By saying, oh, this is not attachment that I cut. The moment we cut somebody. So part of the lesson that April always talks about this unconditional love is also the connection, the in knowing of the interconnectedness of things. The moment we cut a person off, we are cutting, we are making the other and me, and there's a cut. And the interconnection, we've lost this knowingness of the oneness. The teaching that um, Dr. Joe does during his meditation, your unity, your oneness, your wholeness, your unity, your oneness, your wholeness, your center of the magnet, like you're, you're the center of the, feel it in your heart, this oneness. We've lost it. The moment I say I'm going to cut somebody off, that's what I've done. I'm you no longer. Of, you cut part of yourself off. Exactly. I'm no longer participating in unity. I'm no longer participating in oneness. Then we are wondering why is the universe not bringing us abundance? Well, you're cutting yourself off. The greatest example on this was my mother. My mother always uh, struggled financially. But look at her, and that's one thing that I implore that people not do is cut 
themselves off from relationships because my mother was exemplary in cutting herself off from her mother, her sister, my her daughter, which is me, um, her um, in-laws, which was my, my father's family. And out of the cutting, she was always financially struggling all her life. She was a school teacher. She struggled all her life. But now when I reflect back on what she did was she cut herself off from the rest of the universe. You don't know that your sister, somebody would have brought you abundance. You don't know that your husband's uh, family, somebody from there would have brought you abundance. That connection would have brought you abundance. No, but you cut them off. Don't, don't, don't go to these people's house. Don't... Uh, once my mom and dad separated, she was like, no, you're not going to, you know, that controlling kind of women have the controlling kind of love for the children, that the children should love only the mother, not the father or the father's family. So she cut us off from that side of the family, but in the cutting off, she cut herself off from abundance. That's why that I wanted to offer that example that, this is what happens when you cut yourself off. So always find a way that you can kind of tolerate this person. Like maybe have a minimal relationship. You know, Eckhart, even with his uh, father and mother, he would go for a few days to his mother. In a year, he would visit her for two or three days. He couldn't handle her for more than a, two or three days, right? Because she was incessant, she was very egoic, I think, same thing with his father. It's not like he brought his father to Canada and lived with his father or something, or brought his mother to Canada and lived with his mother, nothing of that sort. But you can, you can love them unconditionally and as well as minimize the interaction, but I would not cut anybody off. With that, I'll go to Hannah. Hannah, you wanna say something about this? Thank you for waiting for so long. Oh no, you're good. Um, wow, I love everybody's answers. Um, and I totally agree. Um, I have been recently, it's a synchronicity, uh, learning how to use what I, what I've learned from my dad as the mirror exercise, looking within and realizing that, you know, something that somebody else is doing is triggering me. And I have personally found that very difficult. <laughs> um, and I would 100% agree that we can definitely cut ourselves off from the opportunities that we get because when you learn how to do that, I, I always felt like whoever had put out this question, um, I always felt that I was hurting other people when I wanted to cut off from them or to, you know, make boundaries. And I was so focused on everybody else around me that I didn't even give myself a second thought at all. And I, I've learned that we have to treat ourselves really really important we we are super important and we have to put in the work to you know grow and I think boundaries are really important and I think if it is a person that is truly truly hurting you I think that there can be a lesson in learning how to let that person go but I I definitely also think that looking inward and seeing those triggers and seeing how it affects you and really working through them really, really helps. It really helped me, really helped me. Beautiful. Thank you so much, Hannah. Grateful you. for your presence here. Thank you. I'm happy to be here. <laughs> It's amazing that like, between your dad and being on this panel, like your wisdom is growing. So, and it's um, mind boggling to see it in somebody so young. So it's so, so, I'm thrilled to no end. Thank you.
I, I am so happy to be here and I've learned a lot from my dad. So <laughs> I've learned a lot from your dad as well. <laughs> serious, man. That guy's unbelievable. <clears throat> he really is awesome. Yeah, he is. <laughs> I mean, you talk, he, he's definitely deep and he's got, he's got a great, um, the way he twists words and and the, and different analogies really really hits home, you know. Communication, his, right? His way with words is so phenomenal. And growing up with a person that did not was not that person at all. <laughs> growing up to the person that I see now is so amazing, and it just makes me realize that you can totally do a three sixty and be a really amazing person. My, my daughter's experiencing the same exact thing. She doesn't, she, she's just, she thinks just because of um, my illness that I've changed, but she didn't realize <laughs> I changed before. Yeah, yeah. yeah <laughs> I get that. <laughs> so. Perfect. Thank you, Hannah, thank you to you. Francesco, did you wanna say something about this topic? And I know uh, MJ and Hernan have joined us along with Dave. And Summer is online too. So awesome. Go ahead, Francesca. Thank you. Hear me? Yes, we can. Okay, I Thank always you. have to test out the speakers. <laughs> wow. Um, what a question, because this literally has been my year. <laughs> for about the year it started last year actually really really deeply where um for the first time in years I was drama for the lack of a better word and um you know for years I had been carrying um severe traumatic imprints in relation so so those imprints that I carry those of course are my triggers were my triggers um, I carried them uh, without having all the answers in relation to, oh my goodness, why am I still carrying this trigger after so much inner work? Like you say, you know, it takes years actually of inner work, especially when the the, the triggers are when it's a collective energy. Um, so you know, the family collective, um, and and you can't necessarily see all of it during the process of your inner work until, of course, it comes up and you become triggered. Um, my default um, reaction usually, even when I become triggered, is, oh my goodness, why did I respond this way? You know, I, I examine how I reacted, first of all, um, because when it comes to family, sometimes it's very reactive, you know, so I, I right away I look, I'm like, oh my God, I knew how I showed up was the wrong way. Why did I respond this way? And by asking myself that question, you know, um, you know, I started the self-examination process. It shows me with great clarity. Um, I journal it, of course, I journal as well so that I can stay in that stream of consciousness in order to do the work entirely <laughs> until I come out of the other end, however long it takes. Um, and that self-examination allows me to see my triggers that are playing, that's actually playing the role of why this conflict is happening constantly in the first place, right? Because if I were magnetic energy, right? And if I wasn't carrying that energetic charge, this wouldn't have happened, at least, you know, and I beat myself up over that too, because there are times when it isn't necessarily us. It's because we're family, I'm carrying that energetic charge. And so is my sister, right? And, and this is a collective imprint because it came from, you know, my mom and my aunts and, and so forth. So it goes deep, right? So, um, you know, my suggestion is to, it sounds like you have a ton of ton, and I'm saying ton because this is huge, a ton of inner work to do in relation to self-examination because I'm a firm believer and I've learned that everything is a mirror. It's there to teach us something about ourselves, right? And so, you know, this mirror of whoever it is in your family, that's, you know, it's there to show you, oh my God, this part of me is reactive. I mean, if you don't react to that person, you're probably going to react to somebody at work maybe in your relationship with your child, maybe in, you know, 
your partner because that charge is already there, right? So the universe will keep showing it to you through different people, through these different relationships, right? In order on, until you wake up and go, oh my goodness, um, how about, you know, maybe stop judging? And, and my, my, one of my biggest um, keys that I receive very early on in my journey is instead of judging, seek to understand. Understanding is the key that unlocks everything because when you seek to understand, it actually equips you with the ability to ask even more questions like, okay, first you examine yourself. Why am I reacting this way? What energies within me is attracting this situation to begin with and so forth? So you do your own self-examination, but then also, you know, um, why is my, you know, for me, it was my sister's. It's like, why is my sister thinking these things about me? Why is she saying these things about me? I haven't done anything wrong. Like, you know, what is it, uh, you know, within her that's causing this? And, you know, asking, you know, those questions, I actually went into the meditation. And again, this has taken an entire year. And, and this is something that has gone on for years, but it took a full year to work on it because um, when my mom transitioned last September, so September 7th is going to be a year since her death. Um, when she transitioned, I wasn't allowed, I was controlled in relation to how much I could speak to my mom when she was in the hospital. I didn't even get to speak to her. Um, everything, you know, most days I couldn't even speak to her. I couldn't do any of the spiritual practices. My God, I can do so many things. I wasn't allowed to interfere with any way, shape or form. Um, in fact, uh, I didn't even end up, you know, going to the funeral. Um, and, and the part that I was told I was going to play, they took it away in the end too. So I couldn't even, you know, do a present, nothing. I was completely, um, you know, eliminated from the process. And uh, whenever my sister triggered me, she would be like, oh yeah, you know, that's why mom didn't like you or mom didn't. And, you know, and it was to be like that little, like, oh my God, you know, this is like ripping my soul apart. Right. But again, by working on myself, I became less and less reactive and, and more and more aware of like, oh, my goodness, she's, you know, carrying resentment or whatever it is against me. I have no idea why. Right. But there is something else here. Right. So over time, I got to see what that something else was, which was literally um, about a month almost now ago, because my daughter was there. I sent my daughter for, for a holiday and for the first time I got to see all the projections. So all the things that I've been accused of and you know, as the black sheep pretty much of the family, um, I was able to see that she, my sister is the one that's been doing these things. And um, I, I was horrified because I ended up, you know, my daughter ended up having to come back home early uh, because of it um, and in the end, that was what allowed me to see that there was a collective imprint that even I was running. I didn't even know, even though mine was quiet, I didn't know I had that. Like we had etiquette training and all of this, you know, which is, you know, important, I guess, you know, if, if like if you were to go to England and maybe meet the queen, it's important to know maybe your etiquette training or whatever the case may be, right? If you work corporately and you're at an event and, you know, in your suit and all of that stuff. Um, but, you know, there were certain things that was drilled into us as children that if we made a mistake, we would be punished for it. And so here was this entire scenario playing out except in this time it was against my daughter and um I was like oh my goodness this is a collective imprint this is awful I don't want these imprints to penetrate my daughter's consciousness and so forth so you know I went into that mode too but at the bottom, I guess the point what I'm trying to make and because this is a really long topic and I'm trying not to speak too long um so that I can you know get the main point across and the point I guess is what I'm trying to make is rather than judging, you know, um, this person, you know, as yeah, projecting on you, of course, there's projection and so forth that happens, is you seek to understand them, because by seeking to understand what was happening with my sister, um, you know, I discovered that, oh, my goodness, 
her, the way she shows up is the way, you know, she's learned how to survive because we both were in survival mode as children. She's still living in the past. She's carrying my mom's imprint and the imprints of, you know, my aunts who were very judgmental and always made us feel like we're not good enough. So my sister is extremely controlling and, you know, all about like, oh my God, we have to be perfect. Everything has to be perfect. You know, like you can't wear your outside shoes and even touch anywhere in the house or you have to smile a certain way. If you don't smile that way, it's wrong. And, you know, but everything that you do that's wrong, it becomes a lecture. Well, guess what? Those lectures or, or whatever we want to call them, it's verbal abuse. We just don't talk about it as women. No matter what veil you put on it or what mask you put on it, it's verbal abuse. If you're putting a child down, you know what? It means they're going to feel they're not good enough. They're never going to feel good enough, right? They're going to internalize everything that you're telling them. So there is a way to, you know, have that conversation, you know, build that relationship. Uh, and, and I, even I'm still learning that. You know, my daughter, she's 12, you know, she's turning 13 and, and you know, in, in May next year. And oh my goodness, you know, I'm seeing all the, some, not all, some of the teenager type of, you know, mentality. So what I'm doing is I'm turning that into a conversation. So we have conversations, we, we play games, right? So we have those conversations and so forth. Anyways, I'm going into another direction here. Going back to your question is seek to understand, I would recommend whoever this is, you know, seek to understand your sister and where she's coming from or, or, or your brother, you know, and where they're coming from or whoever this family member is because, and also do that inner work. If you don't do that inner work, you're going to attract the same triggers, the same, you know, over and over again in all of your relationships, right? So um, I, I think a lot of this, like I had to do a lot of inner work, um, tons of inner work, but especially around this, you know, imprint that I was carrying that I had forgotten about, you know, and, and all of a sudden it's like, oh my goodness, now I understand where that perfectionist, you know, in me comes from. It's because, you know, we would be whipped. It's like you're, if you're eating with your knife and fork, your elbows are like this, you know, it's like, darn, put it back in, like whack, you know, kind of thing, right? So um, it, it made sense to me that, oh my goodness, this is where, so what I did, I wrote the most beautiful, and I think it's probably the most powerful, very short, probably the shortest, most powerful message I've ever written to my sister. And I said, you know, I'm sorry that, you know, things are, are, are going the way it is. And, and, you know, I just know that I'm coming from my deepest, you know, space and so forth. And what I did, because I knew that this was a collective family imprint and that she was carrying these programs still and still operating from that level when it comes to her relationships, um, I poked a hole in it. I, I said exactly what it was and it's like pop. So it's like, there's this big balloon, you know, this family collective imprint of, you know, limiting beliefs and, and all of this stuff, right? So by poking a hole in it, I poked a hole in it. And then that was when she actually booked the flight for my daughter to come home, right? She didn't respond to it, um, had a conversation with another family member, you know, about how awful I was and so forth. And to me, that didn't matter. Because to me, I was like, okay, by then I was no longer triggering, of course, I wasn't triggering anymore. And I was seeing with such great clarity that I was able to put that, you know, to, to, to go into meditation and see that and poke a hole in it. And you know what, I, I'm confident I'm holding space now. So I haven't, um, what, what was the word I think you used? Like I haven't, let her go. She's my sister. Of course, I love her more than anything. We grew up together, you know, as a child, as um, someone who have done, you know, inner work, and I understand where people are coming from. Uh, there is no way I can see this and be angry with her or like cut her off and go, oh my God, you know, it's like, you're my enemy now. I've judged you, you know, I'm, I'm practicing, you know, no matter what fancy spiritual word I put on it, that's not how you know, we're supposed to deal with that. I mean, um, you mentioned the word non-attachment in there. 
Well, non-attachment, what it really refers to is when you get to such a high state of awareness, high state of consciousness, you know, and people like the Buddha and so forth realize, you know, there are no eyes, no ears, no tongue, no body, no consciousness. That's what non-attachment is. So triggers, oh my God, that's like way down on the list, you know, that that's like our inner work we, to, to get there and, and stay there. Um, that's, that's a whole, so, so don't let, you know, um, the ego mind use spiritual buzzwords. It's not a spiritual buzzword, but it, it is using it in this case to make you believe that you're doing the right thing because there's something within you that doesn't want to, that maybe might be avoiding this inner work or, or you know, rather than looking at yourself deep enough. And, and if you're not seeing your triggers, then you got to go deeper. You haven't gone deep enough. It's, it's you that's who's missing something. Um, perhaps, you know, if you don't have a daily meditation practice, I recommend, you know, starting one and, and journal because journaling allows you to see the content of your mind. It allows you to see the content. You journal what comes up of your own egoic state of mind. So your imprints and your pain body imprints. That's the beautiful, powerful thing about journaling. It's why I love writing. Right, because when you can see it in front of you, even after you finish meditating and you're journaling, you could actually work on it. Right, you can work on dissolving that by becoming present with it, and and so forth. Right, so um, you know, my again, use this opportunity as a mirror. Um, seek to understand, you know, this family member, whoever it is, it doesn't mean you don't have spiritual boundaries. It's okay to have healthy spiritual boundaries, like. I'm not talking to my sister right now, but I'm also at the same time holding space because I know I've poked a hole in a giant balloon that needs to go. That whole cycle in our family needs to go because it's child abuse. And I have zero tolerance for child abuse in any of its form, no matter whether we put it in, whether we call it discipline or whatever. You know, children are children. They're going to make mistakes. You don't punish them for mistakes. We learn we should punish, right? There's cultures upon cult many, many cultures that do that, right? It's like default punishment. Oh my God, that child just made a mistake. Well, that child's egoic state of mind is still coming into formation right now. That child is only 12 years old. You know, they're, yeah, they're going to have insights and awareness. And this is why I play these games with Charlotte, right? To, to help her mind, to help guide her and so forth, and to allow her to use her mind, to teach her how to use her own, right? Um, because I'm not going to always be here. So, you know, use the opportunity as a mirror, seek to understand whoever it is. Um, and it's okay to have, I think Puna mentioned, a minimal relationship, right? Because of course you don't wanna call somebody who might be energetically draining or however this is impacting you, but rather use that time to work on yourself. Um, yeah, that, that's pretty much, you know, my share <laughs> hopefully is in a nutshell. I don't know how long I spoke, but yes. And I, and many, many blessings, whoever this is, you know, I wish you all the best in, in, you know, understanding, you know, my little formula is understanding leads, leads to empathy because that's the way to trigger empathy. When you understand, oh my God, this person is stuck. You know, like in my case, my sister is stuck. She's carrying all of my mom's imprints. And she's carrying all of my messed up family's imprints. You know, they don't know that it's messed up. The way their mind is wired, they actually think that it is, you know. They're carrying all these imprints and they're showing up because the mind has convinced them that's the right thing to do, the way in which they're showing up. And they can't see anything otherwise, right? So, you know, understanding leads to empathy, Empathy leads to compassion. How could you not have compassion? I'm getting goosebumps. <laughs> How could you not have compassion at that point when you see, you know, what, what's happening to somebody at that depth to the point they're blind and they cannot see, right? They're, they're just, you know, disillusioned, right? And if you are awake um, as as you are, or, or, you know, I, I always say if you're awake as you claim to be, then 
show up as such, be awake, be, be aware, awake, awake is seeing, right? Not just yourself, but seeing that other person at, at the greater, as, as great of a depth as you can see yourself, right? Because you can only see as far as you can see within yourself, right? So the more inner work you do, the deeper you'll have the ability to see somebody else, right? So, you know, understanding leads to empathy, empathy to compassion. And then, of course, with compassion, how could you not forgive at that point, right? And when you forgive, it's just like, every, it's like automatic, un unconditional love just opens up, right? So, you know, I wish you all the best and, and many, many blessings. Thank you. Thank you so much, Francesca. I think you had a question. You raised your hand, but you you didn't interrupt. What did you want to say, Hugh? You know, it's funny that um, Francesca said something about family, you know, reacting, and then before you know, you could trigger and go out in public. Well, what I know for a fact that family, I don't know what it is, but it's like 10 times more sensitive than a perfect stranger. Absolutely. So, yes. You, you know what I mean? So it's just like you can you can look at a brother or sister, mother, father, just <laughs> look, no say, just the look. And and boom, like me and my brother, he'd go <laughs> off just because that look, I know what you're thinking. And like I ain't said nothing, you know, but I never really wrapped my head around that. How about you, Penny? I mean, if you ever figure that out, why the why the family relationships are so fragile and sensitive more than a a public introduction to some, or just a friend you know well because that's where our imprints come from all of our wiring comes from our upbringing it comes from our family from our parents that's why so whatever we're carrying whether it's turned into a trigger or bliss whatever it is we're carrying it's part of it came through them from them so that's like so every single one of my clients when I do one-on-one -on -one work with them I do what's called an energetic blueprint and basically what, what I do is I ask them questions about okay can you tell me as far back as you can remember from childhood you know well, what happened, right? So I asked them about their relationship with the mom, the relationship with the dad, relationship with the sibling, however many, you know, sibling they have. And basically by collecting that information, it allows me to see their blueprint of their egoic state of mind, yeah. the density of the mind, you know, the whole nine yards. Yeah, and I was a builder. So the blueprint would be don't do business with family. Gotcha. <laughs> It's not so much as that, Hugh. It's yeah. uh, the family members, like uh, April explains, right? That soul group. Yeah. That's your soul group. You already, in the other realm, you already had a pact with all these people. Like Francesca already had a pact with her sister that her sister should trigger her in the way that she's triggering her right now. Right, so this, all these are soul families. And as Eckhart says, right, the more shared past we have with someone, the more presence we need in their presence. Yeah. Because they know, they know exactly what buttons to push. Yes, yeah. so I was just gonna say they're masters of the buttons in that regard, yeah. <laughs> so they're outsmarting the ego, huh? And then um, the other thing is, is even if you change, right, just like your daughter is expecting that your um, current health condition is what is changing you, they still have, just realize, they still think of you as the person that you were before. Yeah. Like they are stuck with that mental construct of what you is. So they don't see this new change you. Yeah. <laughs> and they're going to compare it with their their mental construct oh he's supposed to when he gives that kind of a look he's supposed to be doing this but you may be giving that look because you're just like thinking of something else like maybe you're uh, there's a muscle pull in your this thing so that look came on your face right you have a muscle pull in your 
uh, calf and you, you gave that look, but they're thinking that, oh, now he's getting angry or whatever your trick, whatever they thought would trigger you with that look, right? So that's what it is. Patricia, did you want to say something more? I know you said very little. After everyone's input, do you have any additional insights? Um, to wrap this up? Yes, just, just um, I would like you to bring the example though, because in your case, I, I, I love this example that you have your mother, right? As a, but then certain situation were replayed in other environment, like at your work environment. Remember the harassment case? So you had to drop it there and then kind of your relationship with your mother uh, mended by itself. But mm -hmm. again, the work was on you and we don't have to directly heal it with the person that's causing it, right? We can heal it with another person mm -hmm. that kind mm -hmm. of replaces them and presents that same trigger like mm -hmm. in the different situations because sometimes we not have the opportunity maybe in that moment to work on it with the person that originally created that right yes and you were uh, you got the perfect uh, uh, um, analogy of what I'm talking about that I've stated this experience of mine before that in 2005, 2006 timeframe, I was uh, sexually harassed at work and I made a conscious effort to not do anything about it. Like I deleted all the instant messages. I deleted all the emails so that it would not even, and I was not like an Eckhart Tolle follower at that time. I don't know what goodness in me said that, what little presence power in me I had. At that point in time, I did that. And everybody in my uh, work situation was saying, oh, you need to go to HR. You need to do this thing. You need to file for harassment uh, kind of thing. And I said, no, this is one time that I'm, even my ex-husband told me that, that, why don't you go pursue it with HR? And then I said, no, this is one time that I will make sure that I will forgive this person completely. Like I will make sure that it's not a single piece of evidence and I don't want to do anything. I just, it just so happened that when this happened, I went to the universe and said, please help me. Somebody from uh, the same workplace had moved to another company. They offered me a job at that company and I immediately moved. So I was out of that situation without anything worse happening other than emails and instant messages. Uh, but um, because of that, my mom, who had not been speaking to me for from 2002 to 2007 time frame, the same time frame, 2006 time frame, she would not have spoken to me for four or five, the same cutting off that I'm saying, right? She got upset with me and she said she was not going to speak. How, many, how much ever I would call her, she would not speak to me. And so the moment I forgave him is when my mom actually, so it's almost like what this person is saying about projection, right? If they would actually work the same situation with another person, this family member, something would change something. The quantum entanglement with this person would shift, like they'll break that energy, like what Dr. Joe says, right? Like that divinity within us, that energy that comes through us is what breaks that uh, quantum entanglement with that person. We are just not getting to that presence, that level of uh, divinity within us, that vibrational energy is not um, arising within us. And I, I feel when I did the forgiveness, right? Maybe that's the part where the ego subsided, right? Like the presence must have arisen. And because presence arose, then my mother's situation mended. Like she herself told my brother, hey, I want to talk to her. and I want her to come to India. And I went to India in 2009. Uh, excellent time with her. So that's how it works out. That you don't have to actually, very good uh, pointer that you picked up, Patricia. 
incredible, incredibly yeah, amazing. That, that thank you, be thank very you. Very useful thank you. because maybe sometimes it's not possible or it's the hardest to work it out with the this family person. member, right? Mm -hmm. But the life will present you with that so you can still work it out with someone else and then with the grace of the universe they will see yeah that was the lesson don't take don't put it personally on that particular person it was the lesson for you right and it almost is like what uh like i told you I told you in the beginning right that i listened to a couple of uh, channels channeling saint germain and it's not the same person they're two different people but they're channeling uh i don't know if y'all know saint germain i think he actually uh was contributing towards the uh, independence of america as well and he was doing some kind of peace work and healing work in europe uh, spain portugal i don't know what area i don't even know what the this thing is but what he says is you have to have instead of saying some situation should change, right? Like uh, you see a, a, a person that is homeless. Instead of saying, oh, this homeless person, um, uh, why are they homeless? Uh, why can't they get a job? Or, you know, a normal uh, way of thinking is, why can't they get a job? Instead of that, what we have to look at is, that this homeless person has their own soul journey. They're living out their own soul journey and honor. have that honor their honor and have compassion for their soul journey. And then things will unfold correctly. And we have to have that kind of um, response to every situation. Like, um, um, the war situation like when we say oh this war should not should not be like the ukraine war should not be happening right instead of that honor the soul journey of everyone that is involved in the war if we uh, he also uh, uh, he also said um like when you know when we say i want to bring peace and uh, peace and um i want the whole uh, universe i mean this planet to be at peace he said, you cannot do that. That's the wrong way of, then that means you're generating more war. Because of- the Resisting that fact that- You're resisting, is, you're resisting how things are. So um, I love, I absolutely love that. So now when I see something, right? And I'm about to say, oh, this should not be happening. I, I go, no, what is the compassionate response to it? that it should be that I need to honor the soul journey of this homeless person. Or like, you know, when we um, see somebody struggling that, like the, um, I was telling somebody, um, uh, why don't you uh, try the uh, medical medium protocol, right? For their health. And they were having like such a hard time with the whole no gluten, no dairy kind, kind of thing, uh, no eggs. And I was like, instead of saying, why are they not? It's easy. It's easy to give up. Like you're suffering, right? But then you have to be the compassionate. Yeah, it's okay. It's okay. That's hey, their soul journey. Hey, Kurnia, you can, it's, a, it's like you can't give up on family. You just got to keep wrong with it. But when it comes to a stranger, <clears throat> stranger or a person at work, someone that's not as close. Now, this is probably where I get a little, little lost. I'll see that maybe they're so unconscious that I'm not going to sit there and try as hard. I'm just going to drift away and do. I'm not going to go out of my way like I would have to in a family situation where you have to address it. You know what I mean? So um, Patricia was saying something about what if um, a family member wasn't there for the practice with or whatever. At least I, I thought you said said that. Um, you know, I mean, I got a lot of practice with my family because I had to, but I got news for you. I would never give that much room and effort for a perfect stranger. I would have just... But you should because there's no other. 
What's that? There is no other. Even in the coworker <laughs> or the uh, perfect stranger, right? There is no other. Like, that's what I'm saying is, is the moment we say, I am not going to do this for this other person, we have made an other and me, and the ego has come back. And this, this learning is about that oneness, that there is no other. That other is me. I am that other. Just like how I said, right, that this person couldn't understand uh, the no eggs. And I was like, I can understand the struggle I had in the beginning of my journey of doing medical medium. And I was eating pizza and all that. And suddenly you're trying to give up something that you, the one thing we are so near and dear is, and especially in my family, it has always been food. Like uh, we do festivals and my mom cooked, she was an excellent cook. We always cook, so I cook a lot of food. And I, I used to love um, this, I wouldn't drink milk, but I used to love this cheese. Uh, we make something called paneer. I used to love that. So suddenly I, I had to give it up. Like, you know, it would like you, you do get tempted. Like suddenly one day you were eating it, next day you're not eating it, right? You get tempted. So I take myself, actually, even Dr. Joe said that, uh, Patricia, remember that interview? He recently did an interview with a person that's uh, see his uh, uh, YouTube um name is CEO of something, a story of a CEO or something. Uh, this person was asking Dr. Joe that, don't you want to change your person? That uh, Don't you get frustrated? Don't you get angry that this person is not changing? And Dr. Joe just uh, sat back and said, uh, no, I just feel unconditional love for that person because I, I can see myself in the in that person I can see and I feel the same way like when I ask people to do like Patricia knows right we are asking people to do the no eggs no I can see my struggles I can see where I, I would like want the paneer and now I cannot have it but then I I kind of like okay I cannot have paneer but then I can have um, like uh, Patricia gave this walnut pesto so I would like kind of like the chewiness of the walnut and the hemp kind of gives it the um, this thing, right? Like the cheesy feeling. So you kind of eat it and you kind of feel, oh, I'm feeling a cheesy feeling, right? Even though it's hemp seeds, uh, it's just hemp. So I'm glad I brought I, that up because I, I, I get it now. <laughs> I wouldn't, I actually wasn't seeing that. Just like if I was cutting off part of my parent or whatever, just like a perfect space, I'm cutting part of myself off by cutting them off. I get it. Yes. I'm, I'm and glad I, I raised my hand. <laughs> it, that's why, you know, like you're having such a fantabulous time with your nurses because you're not seeing the other, right? Your nurses, your doctors, your. Um, remember, we had this conversation where I said, no matter who it is, you, uh, whether it is your neighbor, your, the, the person that comes across your street, Wherever it comes, look at it as though the universe is rising to meet you and help you, right? Your daughter may not come and you were like, oh my God, you were so right, kind, kind of thing, right? You messaged me. Yeah, so, yeah. Um, I want to add something. Um, sure. This, this, you just inspired and reminded me of something. One of the most important things that I saw um, with my personal situation was my sister in relation to not in judgment, I was I realized that, oh my goodness, she was getting upset because I started asking her question. I'm like, why are you so upset? She's like, well, because you were always thinking I am. And then she goes off with this list of judgments. And I'm like, uh, and, and I'm like, no, I'm not. <laughs> I'm not thinking that. I don't say that to anybody. In fact, um, everything that you're carrying, like that the way in, in relation to you, the way you're showing up, that used to be me. So I'm not judging you or comparing myself to you. And it was just like, boom, like she was silent on the phone. I'm like, 
that was me and that's why I'm able to see it you know now um and and so when I'm when I'm speaking to you I'm not judging you I'm just trying to help you to dissolve these family imprints because they have to be we are the ones responsible you know for ending those cycles right, right? and so that was like a big um you know moment in the conversation um the the way in which you know she was showing up the way she did because she thought I was judging her and then I was thinking oh my goodness she's judging me and so there's this two you know both of us thinking we're judging each other and that's not what was happening right, right. so um yeah and, and like Poonam said I love that you know the oneness because then and that's what literally leads to that because you know, I'm like, oh my God, that was an old version of me. You know, that's mm -hmm. exactly so I understand this imprint because I've worked on it, right? Mm -hmm. You know, and same thing with the stranger. If somebody, you know, gets angry, of course, yeah, I will, you know, distance myself from it. Um, but I'm not going to judge that person because right away I'm like, you know, this person is coming from where they're at in their journeys. And, you know, there was a time when, you know, that would, that when that was me too, you know, so, yeah. <laughs> Just at the end, the most beautiful thing that can happen. And I heard what Akar was talking about that question too, because when someone said, I want word peace, I want to people be happy. And he just like, just work on your presence. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. This is, this is all you need to do. Not mm -hmm. to change others, not to tell them what to do, not to nothing, just work on your presence. That's the only responsibility <laughs> that we have. That we have. Yeah. <laughs> I'm really good. Um... I'm going to uh... just one second. Leslie joined, so I don't know if Leslie is able to speak. Hi, can you hear me? Yes, we can, finally. So I, I, you know, once COVID happened, I did Zoom meetings every day for like 18 months for various reasons. And um, I finally figured out what my problem was because um, I had the Facebook live on Mm -hmm. but then I also had the zoom on okay and so it was just and it just, up. okay uh but I'm here got to okay. meet y'all <laughs> and I've been uh -huh. able to listen as I'm trying to figure out I'm not the most tech savvy person but did, um, you, did you have any input on the question that was posed Leslie did do I have any questions or no no any input on the question did you see um, the question well, I, I've been in recovery myself for like 10 years. First, it started with, you know, a chemical dependency. Um, and then once the, that was taken, you know, once I got sober, I realized that was just a symptom or whatever. And I learned a lot about family of origin stuff. Um, so when I was thinking about this question of like, pulling away from somebody um stop me if I'm on the like the wrong track because this is what I think I've been listening to and hearing you, but you're you're on the right track okay <laughs> um because you know um I always feel like okay a trigger is something that is telling me or reminding me that there's something I maybe haven't dealt with um and then when I think about family, my family doesn't really, it's, it's really dysfunctional and there's a lot of enmeshment, but there's really no unkindness. You know what I'm saying? It's just very, everybody's just very quiet. Nobody talks about anything. Um, and so, but having said that, I have found myself getting triggered by it. 
And right now I'm just trying to rebuild my own life um, and be like self-sufficient and standing on my own two feet. Um, and so I'm just trying to think, I'm trying to put myself in a situation. If I was in a very toxic relationship with family, um, like I feel like I have the right to reserve like, a, you know, boundaries for my own sanity. Because once my peace is taken away, um, then I have a problem. Because uh, peace for me is the ultimate goal. Uh, it's what I was looking for whenever I was, you know, drinking or whatever, or finding um, solace in relationship. And there never was any because they were dysfunctional because I came from dysfunction. And I modeled what I saw. And so they were always usually very painful. Um, and so I've taken a step back to dig deep and figure out what's going on, you know, what happened? Why do I pick the people I pick? So like, as far as like a relationship with a friend or, um, a romantic partner if they're constantly triggering me it's easy enough for me to say you know I don't this is not going to work you know like let's just go our separate ways um as far as family my family's not mean to me <laughs> like they don't say things like but but I can't diagnose anybody but you know I I think my dad's on the not a malignant like narcissist but he's somewhere in between the middle and over here um and he doesn't seem to know how to show affection um and the way he treats my mother that will trigger me <sighs> hey to make it easy for you when you uh poonie and straighten me out when i was calling my mother a narcissist you're better off referring to everybody on that size unconscious and conscious. It just makes it a lot simpler because when when you speak, we can read between the lines. You don't have you don't have, it, it just saves okay. you a, it saves you a label. Yes, and it is. They're very unconscious. They're very and they don't even want to become. And so the word that comes to my mind is acceptance. I can either accept that or not. Um and so. I don't hang out with, I mean, they live like 20 minutes away um, and they have their world and their life and I'm doing mine. Um, but, you know, I'll go over there sometimes and stuff like that. Um, and there used to be, it's getting better. There used to be a frustration about the unconsciousness. It was like, I just want smack, smack, you know? It's like, I'm doing this work. Why aren't y'all? But that's, it's not my, it's not my place. Like I'm, I'm here to do my stuff and allow them to be who they are. Um, but I don't think I've ever really had something so extreme that I had to remove myself from them. And I think it's maybe because I have a program um, in a relationship with like, you know, a, a spiritual connection that, um, you know, if it got violent or abusive or people were screaming at me or, you know, stuff like that, I would be like, I'm, I'm not going to do this, you know, like, I'm going to love you from afar. Doesn't mean I don't love you, but it's, it's going to be from afar. And it's just not really like that. Um, in fact, we laugh a lot. Like, that is one thing about my dad is he's a really funny guy, but they were just both emotionally unavailable for me. And that's kind of what led to a lot of stuff. But um, now, you know, I have a friend that says, it's not your fault. You got hit by the bus, but it is your responsibility to go heal yourself and go take care of it. Um, Cause a lot of times, sometimes people just will, 
just stay in this blame game, you know, well, my parents messed me up and that's why I am this way. And okay, sure. Um, probably nobody had a perfect childhood. Um, I don't even think that's the point, you know? So, um, I feel that I've done a lot of work over the past 10 years and it's been like, you know, it's not linear. Um, and I've fallen down on my face and I've had some huge, huge, uh, valuable learning lessons. In fact, the last guy that I was with, like that bottom was bigger than any other bottom I had. And I consider him a spiritual teacher because that was so unbelievably painful and traumatic <laughs> that it got me to an, a, an, another place like therapy and um, another program, which then led me to understand where I'm always coming from. Um, you know, it's not a trigger free world. And so I can't go around being like, okay, y'all can't do this. It triggers me. Um, if I get triggered, I have to go, okay, why what is that pulling up for me um and i'm you know i'm not in a relationship so i wouldn't even know it's been th like more than three years i've just been working on me going back to school doing my internship all that kind of stuff so i'm not even really concerned about it but there is abusive and toxic relationships and then there's relationships that you're going to have arguments you're going to have discussions you're going to have debates and you might be triggered but if you have two people that are healthier then they can talk it through you know or work it out or hey you know when you when you said this it made me feel like that unloved small little girl that was never seen you know um that kind of trigger is okay. <laughs> but like, you know, the, the stuff that I've been through, you know, I mean, I'm talking violence and just bad, you know, bad stuff. And that's another thing. Some, a wise woman in my life has said that, you know, we don't need to go around labeling things as good or bad. They're just opportunities for growth and opportunities to get, you know, closer to, our God, you know, whatever our God is. So um, when things blow up, I try to like go, okay, what's the lesson here? What choice did I make that led me right here? And how can I not do this again? And I'm 48 <laughs> and I'm just learning like um, this, this stuff, but um yeah. Hey, I'm 61. Join the club. Okay. <laughs> That's good. Yeah. I mean, life is, it's just life. And, you know, they, they tell you, life is a journey. It's not about the destination. I'm sometimes I'm tired of the journey. Sometimes I want to get off the bus or the train and get to the destination and relax, but I, I get it. I mean, I don't, but I do. Um, I hate to tell you, you will. Because if you're if you're coming down the Eckert path, how long have you been been working with Eckert? No. I've never done this. Oh, this is awesome because I can see where I mean you're a brave woman to come out and just say all that, but I can already already see that you're rising levels above your family based on the way you're talking. And you're you have the um you got the want. And the power of now was like my navigation system to know that I'm on the right path. How many times have you made the choice and then you had to go back and then think, well, well, no, I shouldn't have done that. I was on the right path. And then you, then you go back, you go forward. You, you, you just don't have no true, nobody has the answer. But I took um, like, I don't want to embarrass myself here, but... <clears throat> probably three years to go through that book, every word of it, because I had such a intense ego, I had to prove this guy wrong. 
And I couldn't prove I could wrong no matter what. And now when I got in this group with, you know, Francesco, Patricia, and Poonian, it just, it all, it all, it, it just flowed together. And I can promise you that power now will set you on the right path and you'll be, you'll be able to answer every question that, that, that everything you just said is addressed right, right to the T. It's beautiful. I'll, I'll email you the audio book if you want. Okay, that'd be great because I feel like I owned that book a long time ago and then it, and then it just kind of disappeared. Um, but yeah, thank you because I always thought my family was cool, but I was in outer space most of the time. I was wasted. Like as soon as I could change the way I felt because I wasn't comfortable in my own skin and I didn't know who I was or like myself, I went with it. And so I was literally unconscious for many, it was many like years. You self-medicated, so what, you know? Exactly. You, you'll get over it. I mean, the, the power now should be on every psychiatrist's desk and it's the reason it's not is because they'd be out of a job yeah that's you know you know kind of way it goes what um, i want to say leslie is uh now that you have chosen the make the choice right to be sober mm -hmm. and this is where now it's going to be a lot of fun because you're really going to experience life as joyful and that's what the journey is about yeah every step is now going to be joyful so just invest your time in Eckhart's work read read the power of now if you want private message me and give me your address and I'll um Amazon send you I think you're somewhere in Texas I'm in Dallas so okay um, yeah. I, I okay. can um send you uh, power of now and a new earth through Amazon just uh, message me your address physical address thank you Thank and you. I'll have those books sent to you and then keep on the like, uh, commitment. What did I say recently? Consistency and commitment, right, yeah. Francesca? Uh. Consistency <laughs> and commitment. So just be on that path, the sword of presence, just keep on this path. Be with us. Um, we have group meditation on Fridays as well. Uh, well just try. It said um, we start at 7.20 p.m. Central Time. Okay. So you can join and we do an hour long meditation. Then we watch Eckhart's talk. Oh, this wow. one is just going to be Eckhart's talk for 20 minutes. And then we discuss it, but there's no discussion this Friday. The alternate Fridays, we have the discussion. The same with the, uh, I forgot to tell everyone that uh, even the Facebook live, I've changed it to alternate Fr uh, Wednesdays because I wanted Patricia uh, to have the time, right? She it becomes very late for her um, at night. It, oh, it also was the case with me that Thursday morning, then I would have to um, wake up early, but I would go to bed late. So Thursday was a dragging day for me. Like I wouldn't have enough energy on Thursday. Then Friday, we would have a very long night for group meditation until midnight, right? So both schedules were like very conflicting for me. And then Patricia, it's all the more an hour later for her. She's on uh, East Coast, right? So I was like, both of us need our rest. So I'll change it a little bit, just see how this goes. So uh, everyone, we won't have Facebook Live next week, but we'll have it the following week. So in two weeks, we meet again. This was incredibly amazing. Thank you, thank you so much. I know MJ, uh, May Jean was online and Hernan was online, Summer was online with us, and uh, Christina joined us, and Sri Lakshmi and Dave also were with us. So, and Leslie has joined us newly. So, thank you, thank you, thank you. Eternally grateful to all of you. Many blessings, much love. Have a fantastic yeah. week. Bye. Thank you. Have a good night. Bye. 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 Bye.